بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد دائما سرمدا ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين وصحبه التجرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of here and the hereafter. We praise him an everlasting praise. We convey our greeting and salutation to the Holy Prophet of Islam, the most noble of all prophets and his pure progenies. Sisters and brothers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the fourth night of our program for Ramadan 2021. يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين they said, O oh Lord, we have wronged ourselves, and if you do not forgive us and do not bless us with your mercy, we shall indeed be among the losers. Araf 23. We start the fourth night as usual with a brief recap of a major point that. Uh, our discussion or conversation centered on it last night. Last night, there was one central theme that uh, dominated most of the conversation. And that was uh, a particular trait and a concept which is regarded by scholars of Irfan and Akhlaq to be the most fundamental and the cause of all sinfulness and that is al-ghafla or forgetfulness. I pointed out as I was trying to unpack the uh, issue that we humans have a tendency when they are not watched or controlled or supervised uh, vi to violate the law, but this kind of understanding becomes very difficult to explain when it comes to our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, since the foundation of our understanding of God as the only reality that is all-seeing, all-knowing, all-present, etc., etc., it makes it very difficult under normal circumstance to be forgetful. But unfortunately, shaitan and nafs and ammara work together. The challenge I pointed last night, that the challenge is to take the belief from its abstraction level and bring it into our daily life and maintain that understanding on a regular basis at all time. But if we were unable to become, to do so, if we are unable to maintain, and we fail to bring God out of its abstraction into uh, the, the domain of our life, then the state of the spiritual ruin begins by us becoming forgetful, and uh, naturally, as the forgetfulness becomes stronger and stronger, we become sinful. And uh, we go back to the, sub, to the metaphor and the similes that repeatedly verses in the Holy Quran use, that we tend to conduct a lifestyle which are no much different from the cattle. So uh, this is something that we really need we, we focused upon last night. 
And as a way out of that spiritual ruin, I began briefly to touch upon the concept of toba and repentance that is so much stressed upon during the month of Ramadan and during this fasting period. Now, to go back to that particular point, the concept of toba, which is the theme that dominates the conversation tonight, inshallah. Uh, if we go back to the early history of human creation, and we read or reread and engage the literature regarding the genesis and the human uh, creation, we see that beginning of the human creation is the first example of toba on one side and arrogance and unruliness on, from the other side. When Adam and Eve realized that they had unwittingly submitted or committed a mistake, and letting themselves fall into the trap that shaitan had already put, uh, laid for them, the arch enemy, they, they became despondent and gloomy, and they be, the only way out was to go to confront this reality and go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for forgiveness. Allah, this is the verse I started with, Rabbana zalamna anfusana. Indeed, uh, we have violated and disrespected ourselves. We wronged ourselves. If you don't forgive us, you don't somehow bless us with your mercy, we are going to be among the losers. Repentance was the only way out. See how the two individuals, the two major players within this uh, story of uh, Genesis on creation, they act differently. Repentance was the only way out of the desperate situation that Adam and Eve uh, found themselves in. Uh, it's uh, kind of slightly going off topic. Islam does not believe that uh, contrary to at least the Jewish and the Christian tradition that borrows the story of Genesis from Judaism, that Eve was the problem. And then after that, you established a, a huge uh, structure for gender discrepancy between uh, Eve and Adam and say that the main problem was Eve. Islam does not believe that. If you go back to the verses of the Holy Quran, blame the blame or the uh, decision for disobedience or mistake is given to both of them. Qala Rabbana. They both said, O oh Lord, we have committed wrong. We have wronged ourselves. So repentance was the only way out for Adam and Eve in, on, in this desperate situation. Now in addition to what Adam and Eve did as far as repenting, clearly establish what we call a precedent, an avenue, a door that is open for all sinners across history to be able to redeem themselves and gain the forgiveness of Allah if they really walk properly through the door. Those of you who are familiar with the writings of Imam Zain al-Abideen the Munajat al-Tawabeen Ilahi anta alladhi fatahta li'ibadika baban ila afwik sammaytahu tawba O Lord, you are the one who has opened such a door for, the, for your servant and you called it the door of repentance and you have said faqulta tubu ila Allah tawbatan nasuha Indeed, uh, ask for forgiveness the door of forgiveness is open and ask for forgiveness but for uh, repent a sincere one now what constitutes a sincere uh, a repentance we inshallah we'll talk about it tonight so in the original uh, creation story 
The dividing factor between Adam and Shaitan or Iblis was repentance. Where Adam, Iblis insisted on his arrogance by challenging God, asking for some times to do what? To prove to God that this jewel of creation that he has asked all the malaika to submit and prostrate in front of him is nothing more than a lowly animal that falls uh, or succumbs to the nafs al-ammara and ego and shah. He says, give me some time and I prove it to you. So we have an arrogance from one side that wants to challenge God and Adam on the other side genuinely remorseful and made up for the mistake by going back to Allah in all humility and humbleness and asking for forgiveness. The mistake made Adam more humble to realize that his or and her shortcoming and made at least more arrogant. So the first story of Genesis, the beginning of human history, we have these two absolute opposite polarity. Arrogance on one side, humbleness on the other. Now when it comes to Tawbah, last night I began briefly touching on one misconception that exists when we talk about Tawbah, that there is a tendency we believe that simply saying astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilayh or going through some rituals during a specific nights, this is the one that secures at the end of the day uh, the, 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 the redemption and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I made it clear last night that it is not a word of apology. Tawbah is not a word of apology or it's a ritual, but it is an exercise of a course correction and a self-restraint and totally changing one's life. It's more of a praxis orientated, not simply words. That's what we have. We have 11 months of going wild, doing everything in the hope that on the night of the 23rd or 21st or 19th, we come to the mosque or some religious other, or even at home, put the Quran over our head and say, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa the slate is clean and we can go back all over again. In last Qutbat al last week, not today, last week, I made it clear. I said, let's step back and reflect when the beginning of Shawwal came, was there a concrete change in our thinking, in our behavior, compared to the beginning of Ramadan? If not, then all the activities have been futile. So it's a unique characteristic of human being. No other animal can revolt from within against within. apart from human being. It's a psychological and a spiritual revolt that leads to correction and change in the pattern of behavior. If saying astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilayh, Quran on the head and going through the ritual does not mean a concrete change in the way we behave vis-a-vis -vis Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason why we need to ask forgiveness is because our forgetfulness has distanced us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if saying astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilayh or the ritual that we go through occasionally doesn't take us closer to Allah, then there is something wrong. They say the height of, fo uh, of uh, folly is the one that we repeat something that has failed again and again and hoping that something miracle comes out of it uh, this time differently. Toba describes a process of remorse and seeking redemption by promising that I am going to change. If we don't change 
on the night of the 23rd when we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, oh Lord, change our destiny for the next 20, uh, 11 months. On what basis we have the audacity to ask for such a, uh, uh, for such a thing? If even during the month of Ramadan that Allah has informed us that we are the guest of the divine, the table has been laid, the host is waiting for us to change and the etiquette for entering into this place is to officiate and start some degree of change in our life. Now I want to go back to the hadith uh, in Nahjul Balagha around the end of it that somebody came, um, Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa heard somebody saying, astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilayh. The manner by which that individual said it led, to the imam to, uh, read, led the imam to react. And he said, atadri mal istighfar, al istighfar darajatul alliyin is a status for the elite and the select. And then he lays down six conditions. Briefly, I touched upon it last night. Four of them are practically possible for everyone if we want to achieve Toba. The last two are only, as Imam says, is for the elite and the select because you really need to change not only the inside, you change the outside as well. So what are these? He says, وَهُوَ إِسْمٌ وَاقِعٌ عَلَى سِتَّةَ مَعَانِ It's a name given that has six foundations. Number one, النَّدْمُ عَلَى مَا مَضَى To be regretful of the past. If the past is to be proud of, there is no basis for the, for the toba and repentance. What are, what are, why do I have to say I'm astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilayh? If the past is not something that I'm remorseful and regretful of it. Number two, al azmu ala tark al awda ilayh. We decide, we make a decision, uh, a clear and sincere uh, promise that we are not going to go back to the old way of life. Otherwise, Yo-yoing back and forth, back and forth, clearly establishes that this kind of toba is not sincere. Number three, and to add ila al hukukahum. If because of sinfulness, a third parties have been subjected to a number of abuse, whether their rights, their characters. There, uh, or anything else have been abused, it is before your sins are forgiven, you have to go back to these individuals and ask for their forgiveness and for their agreement. You've taken some money, wealth, and so on from other people, you can't just go back to Allah, ask for forgiveness, and declare bankruptcy, and that's it, everything is forgiven. No, these rights, have to be given. Critical during this month, those, there were days in which the beginning of the month, every single one would go around checking their friends and associates and asking them to forgive them for the shortcoming. This was part of Hausa etiquette, beginning of Ramadan. We don't do it anymore. And then we expect you change during the month, particularly the Layal al-Qadr. If you have backbited someone, you have cheated and slandered someone, you have been disrespectful to others, you really need before you start asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, you really need to go to these individuals and say, please forgive me. I have done something uh, that I shouldn't have done. Ask them, let them forgive you. So, and to add the not only in the spiritual, ethical, and moral, in the physical sense, if you have taken money from them, if 
you don't pay homes, you are taking the money from the mahrumin and the, the, the poor and the needy within the society. That's the, a hukuk that you should give back to them. You can't ignore it and say, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive me. Number four, أن تعمد إلى كل فريضة عليك ضيعتها فتؤدي حقها. You go back to the religious duties. If you haven't done it, you, you haven't done the religious duties, you really need to go back and start doing them. Story from Marhum Ayatollah Khonsari, whom I met in Tehran in 1976. He used to say in one of his lectures that I repeated my entire prayer and everything, all my religious duties, 15 times in my life to make sure that I have done everything correct. I'm not asking you to do that, but I'm, what this, what Amir al-Mumineen sallallahu says, that what you really need to do is to reflect. You haven't done prayers. You haven't fasted deliberately. You are in totally financially and physically and everything is there to go to Hajj and you, you keep delaying it, hoping one day when we become decrepit and they can't, we can't do anything and then we get into a plane to go to Hajj just before we take the last breath. All the religious duties that you have not done, you really need to do. You can't just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive your sin when there are 10 years of prayers that you have, we haven't done, 10 years of fasting that we haven't done, Hajj that we haven't done, uh, khums and zakat that we haven't paid, etc., etc., etc. When we do it that way, it's a clear uh, sign that we are not serious. We are taking it very lightly. It's a joke. And then the fifth and the sixth conditions, this is why Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this, these are for the elite and the select, is now that I have cleared everything, now I focus on myself. The flesh that grew from the sinfulness has to dissolve. One of my professors, God bless his soul, Marhum Ayatollah Sheikh Mushtaba Tahrani, uh, he passed away a few years ago. Suddenly, around the end of his life, we began to notice how much weight he has lost. Literally became skin and a bone. And when he was asked to explain why did he do that, he said, I cannot stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on day of judgment with a doubtful flesh that I'm not sure whether this flesh has been uh, gained through the right or the wrong way of life. So azm and nadm, these are critical until we become despondent of the past and make a resolute determination for changing one's life, we are not serious about the, 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 our tawbah and repentance. And the tawbah will not be a revolution from within against within if we still give ourselves maximum space to go back to those lifestyles. al azm these nights, those of you who are fortunate enough and you recite Dua Abu Hamza Thamali in, during Sahar, إِذَا رَأَيْتُ مَوْلَاي ذُنُوبِ فَزَعْتْ Imam Sajjad says that Abu Hamza Thamali narrates it, that, O oh Lord, when I reflect on my sin, I'm appalled. And this feeling of appall being appalled should make a clear determination that we are not going to go back. Al-Azm. And for Tawbah, as the teachers of Akhlaq maintain, 
to be an internal revol revolt must completely change the past. And it should happen now. Why? Because the past, as I indicated last night, the past has already been sealed and delivered. We will meet with it in, on the day of judgment. The future, we don't know whether we are going to be around. It's now that we have to make a decision. You miss it, another opportunity gone. And we don't know whether we're going to have the opportunity again uh, to make repentance. So these are some of the uh, conditions uh, and uh, the Imam talks about, he says that once you go through this process, once you completely change yourself, once you change direction and orientation, then you can stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, O oh Lord, you are merciful, grant me that mercy. I have already changed. Then you can stand on the 23rd of Ramadan and say, Oh Lord, change my destiny for, my, for next year because I have already initiated something. But it shouldn't be, the difficulty should not be, uh, should not lead us to despondency. We have, so far, I have talked about the technicalities of, to uh, of Tawbah and repentance. But how should we go about it during this month? I think, like everything else for the month, I mean, for those of us that uh, as soon as month of Ramadan comes, we start cleaning the garage and putting everything up, uh, the hookahs and the, the late now chat and everything else, Tober, part of the planning in advance, part, Tober requires planning both emotionally and mentally. So how do we do that? We go back to Munajat al tawabin again. First, realize that we are not the one, the only one, or we are not alone being disrespectful or sinful. Imam Zain al-Abideen in that dua says, Ilahi ma ana ba'awwali man asaak fatubta alayhi. O Lord, I am not the first one that uh, became sinful, disobedient, and yet you forgave. So understand, I told, I mentioned it last night, unfortunately, granting of the free will to individuals before they are somehow developed mentally and emotionally leads to sinfulness. And that's why the malaika at the beginning of the, the story of Genesis, they were asking Allah, what kind of create, uh, creature are you going to create? Are you going to create some, something that is going to corrupt uh, the world? Because the, the, the result of uneducated and uh, not providing guidance to someone giving them free will is ultimately going to lead most cases to problems. So number one is to understand that we are not alone. We are not the only one who has committed sin and Allah forgiven. There is a hadith that says nothing is sweeter before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, better than seeing an abd, a servant, decides to move towards the direction of Allah and repent. That spiritual journey without Tawbah is not going to happen. We might forget about it, but don't be despondent. Number two, read verses and passages in the Holy Quran that prevents you from being feeling despondent and this is the end of the world and giving up. Those who have sinned 
and have wronged themselves, don't give up. Don't become, don't have despair. Don't become despondent. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu tubu ila Allah tawbatan nasuha. And there are a number of other verses in the Holy Quran clearly stating this. Tawbatan nasuha. And the hadith from the Holy Prophet, khayrul ibadah al-istighfar. Asking repentance is the best and forgiveness the best worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read du'as and do good deeds with the intention of seeking mercy. You, this is the month. If you go to a khutbah sha'bani of the Holy Prophet delivered for people before the month of Ramadan, list, look at the list that the, the Holy Prophet gives. Giving iftar to one person, so much benefit. The citation of Quran, so much reward. Giving even a little bit of water to someone, breaking somebody's fast, etc., etc. Make it part of your habit. Seeking mercy of Allah with the, uh, and by doing good deeds during the month of Ramadan. And finally, uh, remember that if we don't succeed during this month, with all the advantages that are available for us, it's very difficult when the doors are shut and the mercy is removed and we, we have to go back to the ordinary way of dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to get this opportunity. No wonder uh, the hadith again from the Holy Prophet, uh, the, the most wretched individual is the person that goes through this month and does not benefit anything from this month beyond restraint of food and drink. It is a critical month, critical time. We have already seen four nights gone. Before too long, we talked about the last few nights, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that privilege to stay around. Let's not allow this opportunity to pass through our finger and the sooner the better. I reiterate this, the past is out of our control. We can learn from it to redirect and reorient our life now. As far as future, al-amal, that we in the future, eight years, ten years from now, I'm going to repent, nobody knows. When the Holy Prophet ﷺ was asked how he plans for the future, he said, yes, I have planned, but I'm not quite sure if I stay beyond this moment. This is why I have to take this opportunity at this particular moment to do good. Repent and be mindful of Allah's, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah guide us all to the right path, inshallah, and give us the privilege that uh, we're able to use this month to the best and hopefully make concrete shift in our life when it comes to the end of this month. And we may be able to get to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we move properly that during the Layal al-Qadr to rewrite our destiny for the future, inshallah. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.